really appreciate this. Uh, pretty humbled to be up here, to be honest. You know, when you're playing, you're doing something that you love, you never really think of this, you know, 10, 12 years after you graduate. Um, you know, I'd like to say, you know, thank you to Coach Flaherty, um, you know, Vinny DeGifico, I know he's not here today, and then Coach Boyce and Coach Prince. A um, couple of guys that really, you know, didn't let us get away with much and um, kind of shaped us into who we were on and off the field. Um, I'd like to thank my mother and father. Uh, my dad's here today, mom can't be here. Um, you know, same thing, didn't let him get, a, get away with a lot and, um, you know, taught, taught us how to fail successfully growing up and keep pushing forward. And then, you know, lastly, just my teammates. Um, we always pushed each other, you know, either on the baseball field or in the weight room, um, every single one of them. And I wouldn't be standing up here today if it weren't for all those people. So, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, you convinced me that defense was actually my best position, even though I thought I was a forward my entire uh, career. And without your help, I would have never been. I would have never uh, been named the LSE Defender of the Year. So thank you. I'd also like to thank uh, Coach Keller's coaching staff, which included Jimmy Hopkins, Parker Cowan, Mike Cease, and Birdman. Um, I'd also like to thank my, all my teammates that I played with, and none of them are here. Um, I was incredibly lucky to have team, the teammates that I had over the past four years. I got to play with two other Hall of Fame uh, players, Sinesha Baj and uh, Greg Cox, and they were both actually in my freshman class, so I played with them all four years. And many of my teammates, more importantly, have become some of my closest friends. They've been at my wedding, and they've all played a huge role in my life. And I'm so thankful that I got the opportunity to play with you all. Um, there's also a lot of people that are not affiliated with the team that helped me get here today. And I'd like to thank them. I'd like to thank my parents, especially my mom, who's here today. Uh, my parents never missed one of my soccer games growing up. Uh, when I got to college, my mom would demand that I call her after every game <laughs> so that she knew what happened. She'd actually get upset if I didn't call her right away. Uh, she also made Coach Keller film our games. And I would just, then I'd send her the DVDs of the games so that she could watch them. Uh, she even actually flew out, or she would fly out every year to watch a few of the, a couple games when I was at USM. Uh, she would bring a cowbell with her to every game and ring it throughout the game. <laughs> My teammates loved it. Uh, she even surprised me by flying out to watch our last uh, conference game against Rhode Island College. Uh, she had just been out here the week before watching games and then she found out that um, we were going to be able to play for the LEC title. So she flew back home and then turned right back around and came back out here for the LEC title for the LEC uh, last game. So I cannot thank you enough for your support and for also bringing the cowbell to everyone. <laughs> uh, I'd also like to thank my extended family, which includes my Aunt Jo, uh, Uncle Larry, Uncle Buzz, and Aunt Allie, who flew all the way out here from California to support me today, so thank you. Um, and although my wife, uh, Amy, was not around during my USM days, I need to thank her for everything that she's done for me, which includes writing this speech this morning. <laughs> Also convincing me to move back uh, to Maine so that I could get this award. <laughs> and finally, I would like to thank the USM Athletic Administration and the Hall of Fame Committee for selecting me. Uh, my college career ended kind of on a sour note when I was ejected from my last game due to my first and only red card. <laughs> and I had to sit out the next playoff game, which ended in a loss and ended my collegiate career. But now receiving this award, I think it places a nice little ribbon on uh, my collegiate career. Um, and so thank you. I'm truly honored to be a member of the USM Husky Hall of Fame. Thank you.
fun late nights with my friends and shin splints and athletic trainers like Matt Gherkin that somehow kept me on the field when I'm quite sure I was falling apart. And I'm definitely feeling those injuries now. <laughs> um, and of course, the most important people I have to thank is my parents. They let me start playing club soccer on a boys team when I was nine because all girls teams didn't exist that young where we lived. Um, they provided me with every opportunity, not just for soccer, but for success. I can't fathom the number of games that I played in my life, and my parents were there for almost every one. Even when all, with all those games, they managed to never learn most any of the rules. <laughs> um, they couldn't comment on more, much more than, great job, you played really hard, and my mom's favorite comment was, you had some really great kicks. <laughs> so, at the time, I found it a little annoying, but um, now looking back as a mom myself, I think that's what you really need as a kid, to find your passion. It's just parents that want to support you and don't need you to be the best. Um, so thank you to mom and dad for that. And last, but certainly not least, Al for keeping the entire athletic department running with excellent coaches, staff, facilities, and creating an environment where we carried a sense of pride around being a student athlete. Thank you to Meredith Bickford and Kim Turner for unwavering support, and of course, all the therapy sessions when they were needed. Mm -hmm. um, and to the induction committee, thank you for recognizing the accomplishments of me and my team and my coaches in this era of women's soccer with this honor. I am truly humbled to be among this group of incredible inductees. So thank you all very much. First of all, thank you so much, Al, and uh, uh, the USM Selection Committee. It's truly an honor to be invited into this great group of athletes. Um, not only am I uh, thank you for the support, but also for this opportunity to thank the amazing people who are so willing to help a younger man chase his dreams for us. Uh, with that, I want to give the USM Athletic Department a shout out. Um, they set the tone for winning culture. Uh, you know, without that, none of this would be possible. Uh, from here, I, I actually ended up writing uh, three pages of shenanigans that we did <laughs> that involved colorful stories with Al and BL back there. But I've decided to keep this on a slightly more serious tone. Um, so I don't think anyone gets the opportunity to stand here or do their best without a little bit of luck and a good deal of support and dedication to the people around them. Uh, with that, I want to say I'm forever thankful for uh, my parents for all their continued support uh, all throughout the years, uh, allowing me to chase all my dreams and goals. I think parents are to some degree behind every uh, child's success. Um, in my case, we're simply talking about running, but they were with me every step of the way, uh, from training in Austin, New York, to Quebec City, uh, to my last race for USM up in Cleveland. Uh, you've always been there from life's ups and downs, and uh, it's boring and charity in that way, so thank you. Um, my first year at USM, I was an athlete. I was not an athlete. I didn't join, in, join any teams. Uh, I was there to prepare for a career, and I didn't see how athletics had any part of that. Eventually, a friend of mine, a former competitor from Borum, uh, talked me into going to one of the team practices. Uh, there I met Coach Hutch, who cared as much about winning as he did about throwing us into better men. Under Hutch, we spent uh, one season, uh, the better part of one season, ranked in the top ten in the nation. Unfortunately, because of injuries and what have you, we didn't perform our best uh, when it mattered most. Uh, but at the end of my athletic career at USM, when it was all over, I would have to say that I learned more about myself and life through my athletic pursuits than any other part of my college career. Uh, we learned from our successes and failures and our experience along the way to find and shape our reality. <laughs> Very little is more enriching than giving 100% to something and having the support of people around you, uh, even if that is just an athletic endeavor. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank <coughs> all, everyone uh, who supported me on my way. Thank you, Al, and for everybody that put this event on today. I'm honored to be here to accept this award and to see all these familiar faces. As I stand up here, I'm reminded of all the people who helped me to succeed at USM, and I am forever grateful. George Toll, our head coach, worked tirelessly to help us thrive as a team, and I wouldn't have been as successful as I was without all of his guidance. 
He encouraged me to excel in any and all events I was passionate about and would always push me to do my absolute best. I did many events during the meet, most, most of them which were held at the same time. I would see George running across the field to come remind me to change spikes, hit a long jump, sprint over the 55 meter hurdles, all while they were waiting for me at the pole wall. He would halt an entire event just to let me catch my breath and I had to then just jump into the next thing. Uh, if you're wondering how somebody gets into pole vault, well, I can tell you a funny story. Uh, we had a team meeting one evening and George pulled us all aside and said, okay, so we need some people to do some pole vaulting. Is anybody interested? We all looked around at each other and we were like, Ooh. no, not really. And then he asked, well, has anybody ever done gymnastics? And he said, well, I did gymnastics as a kid, so I raised my hand and he said, okay, Melissa, you start pole vaulting next week. <laughs> So then I started pole vaulting. Um, now many of you may know what pole vaulting is, but for those of you who don't, I'll give you a quick synopsis. Uh, pole vaulting is when you have a 10 foot fiberglass pole in your hand, you run down a runway, you plant that pole, and you launch yourself up in the air 10 to 12 feet, and God willing, you land on a mat. Um, when all of this is done properly, very little praying is involved, but it never um, that little trick that got me into pole vaulting brings me to another very significant person that I would like to thank today, and that's Mike Drummy. I'm bummed that either George or Mike could not be here today, but I still definitely want to thank them. Uh, Mike took time away from his family, his friends, and his work to spend time here at USM to coach me in one of the hardest, and some would say the scariest event in track and field. I could not have asked for a better coach and a friend during my time. We traveled to many places and competed in various competitions, including nationals, which were in Minnesota, where I achieved, achieved the title of an All-American. <coughs> Even though most of the time I was the only pole vaulter, he still took the time out of his life to come and support me. I couldn't have done this without him. Most importantly, I'd like to thank my parents, their sacrifice and unwavering dedication to me and my sisters during all of our events were pivotal to our success. They taught me to get up when you fall, to learn from your mistakes, and to never take anything for granted. My husband and little girls are here today too, and even though they were not around for my college athletic career, they're here to support me, and I'm so proud to tell them that their mom is a Hall of Famer. Congratulations to all of the inductees today. Uh, it is an honor for us to have been recognized for all of our hard work and our dedication. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank Coach Flaherty and everybody in the coaching staff at USM. They did a great job there. Uh, I still remember the first day showing up to fall ball. I rode down on the Razor scooter and uh, had really long hair. Flaherty really loved that. <laughs> on top of that, I asked him where my baseball pants were because I only had shorts on them. They told me I had to make the team first. So, <laughs> Held that grudge for four years and worked to get where I got. Um, I'd also like to thank my parents, my dad especially. We had a uh, batting cage in our barn growing up where he would throw countless pitches to me every day after work. And it's amazing to me that his arm is still attached. Because <laughs> um, there was also one more story about Flaherty that uh, we were taking batting practice one day and he was out walking into center field. And I was hitting and I actually hit a line drive into his back and the only thing I heard was <clears throat> should have hit it harder. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a tough guy. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm reminded of it every time we share memories with our littles and with one another. I'm so grateful to share past, present, and future with such wonderful friends. My three-year-old daughter, Avery, loves to look at old, old photos of me playing basketball. Um, she wasn't that into watching me today, so that's a bummer. Uh, but she says, look, Mama, you're, uh, you're playing basketball. I want to play basketball like you someday. I know I'll support her no matter what she does, but I hope she finds something that brings her as much joy as basketball has brought me. I entered college as a scrawny eight-year-old, and because of this, I was almost immediately given the nickname Squirt by my teammates. Didn't matter how I felt about the nickname, it was there to say. <laughs> Even Coach Fife called me Squirt. <laughs> as much as the nickname meant to me, I can't say that I miss being called Squirt, nor do I miss being riddled with minor injuries that come from playing basketball as such a, as such a small player, though having a toddler isn't much better. <laughs> The upside of all those bumps and bruises was that it allowed me to become fast friends with the athletic training staff. Time spent in the training room, before and after practices and games, while the trainers worked their magic, allowed me to keep playing. I can't thank the athletic training staff enough for everything they did for me during my four years. I'd like to give Coach Byfield a special thank you. Thank you for taking a chance on me and recruiting me to play for the USM. Playing college for such an amazing women's basketball program was a dream come true. It was such an honor to play for you and be a part of your legacy in a streak of their 20 win seasons as well. You know, we almost blew it by senior year, but we didn't. That's <laughs> good. Your epic foot stomp will forever be engraved in my mind. In closing, I would like to say thank you to everyone that made this possible. My family and friends, all the coaches that I have, my teammates, the USM faculty administration, the Hall of Fame committee, the athletic department and their staff, and for all the fans, especially the super dedicated fans who never miss a home game. I wouldn't be the person I am today, or have the amazing life I have today without USM. I am honored to be a USM alumni and a Hall of Famer, and will forever be grateful for my four years spent at USM. Thank you.